I hereby call this meeting Norwood City Council to order. Please rise for the prayer and the of Billings. Our Father, who art in heaven, and the body we congregate in this council chamber, we pray for thy divine guidance so that we may do all things well according to thy holy will. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Williams, please come roll. Mr. Bonsall. Here. Mr. Gavin. Here. Mr. Geraci. Here. Mr. Kelsch. Here. Mr. Donardo. Here. Mr. Thompson. Here. Mr. Brady. Here. All members present. Moving on to item E, amendment of agenda. And please be patient with me. Beginning with ordinance K1, uh, you have a new copy of the ordinance consenting to an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation. Uh, this afternoon, they added a new intersection, is my understanding. So this is the, uh, the uh, new ordinance replacing that one. Item K2, ordinance uh, enacting new Chapter 567 of Norwood Codified Ordinance entitled Chronic Nuisances and Declaring an Emergency. We have a new copy of that. Item K7, the ordinance adopting the personnel policy and procedure manual of the city of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. We have a new copy of that. And then we're adding K8. Yep. And K8 is the ordinance adopting the personnel policy and procedure manual of the city of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. So we have two for that. Also, after the minutes, we're adding a change to the rules of council. Also, we are removing H1, Parks, Recreation, and Public Places Committee report. And finally, uh, in item L1, the letter from the auditor's office, that should be in communications as P3. So the letter from the auditor's office regarding the August monthly financial reports will be P3. K7, forgive me, is the ordinance confirming the unused sick leave benefit to all full-time unclassified employees for more than four years of continuous service with the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declared emergency. Thank you, Mr. Moore. And I think that's all I had. Mr. Geraci? I'd like to uh, amend it and remove K2 for tonight's, from tonight's meeting as there's some clerical errors that cannot be adjusted on council floor at this time. I'll uh, recommend it for the next council. So you meeting. would like to remove K2, K2 from the agenda, okay? Until the clerical errors are fixed on that ordinance. Anything else? Mr. Bonsall? Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay, second by Mr. Bonsall. Any other discussion? Mrs. Williams, please call the roll. Mr. Buzzle. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Geraci. Yes. Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Braden. Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. The motion passes. Moving on to item F, minutes of previous meeting, July 14th, 2020, and July 28th, 2020, special meeting. Mr. DiNardo. Uh, motion to receive and file these minutes. Motion by Mr. DiNardo to receive and file the minutes. Mr. Braden. I'll second. Second by Mr. Braden. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsall. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Geraci. Yes. Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Braden. Yes, ma'am. 
All members present voting aye. The motion passes. Moving on to the next item, which changed to rules of council. Mr. Bonsell. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I move that we adopt the uh, standing rules of council uh, as presented uh, to council tonight. Motion by Mr. Bonsell. Mr. Thompson. A second. Second by Mr. Thompson. Any discussion? Mr. Bonsell. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. So the uh, standing rules of council, we have we actually met back in March, the Law and Ordinance Committee, to, uh, and we talked about moving all of our uh, discussion to the beginning of the meeting so people that want to speak on items that don't pertain to the agenda, they don't have to wait for the hour, hour and a half that we you know, go through our ordinances and go through the agenda. So everybody gets to speak at once at the, fr at the front of the meeting. And then if they've got a kid's basketball game or whatever they've got to go to, they can then they can speak to us and then they're allowed, they can leave and not have to be a two hour commitment. So um, I sent two versions of this. So basically I typed it up for the committee. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, late on presenting it. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. Tracy. But um, uh, I sent it the red line version to council, although, and then uh, a final version. Although it's hard, you can't see the red line on the, on the phone. That's the only bad thing about it because it's a Word document. But I do have an extra copy of the red line version if anybody needs to see it, but essentially it's just adjusting the, as you'll see on page three, uh, excuse me, page four, um, you'll see that uh, there's an, after administration reports, there's no other, other request to address council. And then you'll see uh, after public hearings, you'll see it changed to request to address council where it used to say on agenda items. And then there's just some, two more sentences that were removed in item three. And it's basically that I'm just going to read the full sentences that were removed. Uh, persons requesting to address council relative to an agenda item shall normally be permitted to speak prior to the consideration of that item. Persons whose comments do not relate to an agenda item shall normally be permitted to address council after consideration of all ordinances and resolutions and prior to consideration of other unfinished or new business. So those two sentences were struck because they weren't really relevant anymore. So then it goes into persons addressing council shall be allotted five minutes. And then, unless council votes to extend or limit the time of any speaker. And there's, you know, other things in there as well. But just want to let you all know what the changes are there. It's completely just to move the uh, uh, request to address council all at the beginning so that we can try to be, uh, you know, more available to the public to be able to speak with us. So, I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonsell. Anyone else? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsall? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Duracy? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Brayton? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. Motion passes. That brings us to... Uh, Mr. President? Yes. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. So I'd like to move that we uh, remove item M from the agenda, other request to address council. And I would like to edit item G uh, to read request to address council and strike the the other line on that on agenda items yeah yeah so yeah strike on agenda items but just item g will just say request to address council we have a motion by mr bonzel mr thompson second second by mr thompson any discussion point of order though that would be h then on this new one because oh, okay, sorry, g is h. yeah thank you so yes that's fine Anything else? Please call the roll. Mr. Bunzel? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Brayton? Yes, ma'am. All members present voting aye. Motion passes. That brings us to item H. No. Mm -hmm. Request to address council. I have quite a few this evening. When I call your name, please come to the podium. Uh, you will have, please state your name, your address, and you will have five minutes to address council. And I will have the uh, monitor there. Once you say your name and your address, I'll hit start and you'll have five minutes, okay? First person that I have is Robin Cox.
Hi, my name is Robin Cox. I live at 4211 North Avenue here in Norwood. When you talk to longtime residents, they often share how good it felt to grow up or raise kids in Norwood, walking to school or to the corner store, knowing their neighbors, feeling safe and connected in the city. New Norwoodians, like me, I've been here 10 years, so I guess I'm not that new. Um, I live on Forest Avenue. Um, we'll tell you how the city's walkable neighborhoods and wide front porches drew them in and made them want to put down roots. What we're all responding to, old and new Norwood, is the city's urban nature, the naturally occurring mixed use pattern being replicated, being replicated now in new projects like the US playing card factory development. We're not a suburb where residential communities are cordoned off from business districts. Even homes on the most iconic residential streets, Floral and Indian Mound, for example, aren't far from businesses because our city and its good bones grew up in a time when people not cars drove development. When people not only wanted, but needed to be able to walk to a corner store, to work, to school, to play. Norwood has dozens of former corner stores scattered across the city, many of them boarded up and deteriorating. They're neighborhood eyesores. Developers are unlikely to take on these small high-risk properties, but small businesses, creative thinkers, entrepreneurs, family-friendly businesses might, especially if City Council wisely gives these small businesses the freedom to improve and beautify these properties. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, um, Elizabeth Hatch. I'm Elizabeth Hatchett. Um, my address is 1757 Weir. I'm half owner with my husband of a corner store property on Hopkins that's been kind of controversial. So, um, so I had an incredibly hard time deciding on what to say tonight or even whether to come at all. Should I try to dispel all the rumors that have been spread about us online? as we've poured our own hard-earned money into renovating a long-time eyesore and rapidly deteriorating structurally unsound building a block away from our house? There would certainly be not enough time for that. <laughs> I would, however, like to dispel the falsehood that I don't care about my neighbor's concerns. Um, I requested a, the mural ordinance packet that included all the letters for and against murals. Um, I'd like to discuss the part of a letter from a former council person. This person quoted a neighbor close to the Hopkins building who asks those online who are in favor of murals in Norwood to let council people know about their support after a petition was submitted to all of council by other Hopkins neighbors against what they referred to as a planned mural. For the record, there is and was no planned mural. We were at the stage of renovation when we were trying to decide whether we were gonna demolish the back of the building or pay to make it structurally sound. We were nowhere close to mural planning. In the letter we delivered to neighbors after their petition, I did share an idea along with the fact that I was not at all married to that idea and hoped to hear from neighbors if and when murals ever were to become legal. My husband also wrote in quotes, Please know that this, please know this, we believe that living in harmony with our neighbors is far more important than any particular vision we might have for this property. <clears throat> the previous council member writing this letter made a judgment that anyone choosing to write to council in favor of murals in general after that request online couldn't possibly care about the perspective of these concerned neighbors. I'd like to read a few comments I've made in this same Facebook group about the potential mural on Hopkins and my, my desire to respect my neighbors. Um, I wasn't a part of the group when the, when the um, beginning message started, but I commented on that same thread. I can't express how encouraging it is to join this fabulous group, especially after this petition situation. 
We'll do what we can to make a mural happen on the building while respecting our neighbor's ultimate wishes, hoping that most folks were just operating on misinformation. And then on another thread, when it seemed like people were misunderstanding that we weren't going to go ahead without the blessing of our neighbors, I clarified. Just to clarify, if the consensus of my neighbors who face that wall continue to oppose murals, I won't paint one there. But I do want murals to be approved within residential for future corner businesses, for apartment complexes, for garage door fabulous photo ops. I think they would be a great tool to lend beauty to our sometimes strange architectural juxtapositions. A realtor once spoke to me of West Norwood's disjointed architecture as a liability. It doesn't have to be that way. We could make it an asset through a creative lens. There is also the option of selling or renting this building and buying another storefront, but we wouldn't buy again if Norwood continues to heavily restrict murals. I've seen all kinds of other rumors online, and I just want to say publicly to all the people at home to please stop. Your words are causing irreparable damage to the possibility of future goodwill between neighbors. And Councilman Pelsch and Councilman Geraci, I know your intentions were to try to represent a neighbor who isn't feeling heard, but the words you used at the last council meeting painted my husband and I as stalkers, which is absolutely false and incredibly damaging. Councilman Braden, I wish I had the opportunity to speak with you beforehand, but I'm very grateful that you kept your neutrality. Um, I'd like to close with showing you a picture of our, um, of our building before renovation as it looked for the last two decades. So this is what it's looked like for the last two decades. This is the in progress photo of what it looks like today. It would help if the camera's there too. The camera's on the behind it too. Oh. Um, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Hatchett. A handful of neighbors on Hopkins seem to be more afraid of a potential mural within sight than they were concerned about the view they endured for decades. Everyone is entitled to their opinions and preferences, but not everyone agrees with these neighbors. Should the next entrepreneur who is brave enough to take on a distressed corner store considered a high-risk property that so often drags down the neighborhood? Thank please. you, Mrs. Hatch. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I thought you heard me the first time. <laughs> next, we have uh, Kate Han. Hi, my name is Kate Hand, and I live at 2269 Adams Avenue. I'm a 12-year citizen of Norwood and also leader of Norwood's Organized Women, which is a group online dedicated to positive, progressive change, solutions-based activism, and raising women's voices in our city. And I'm here to speak today in support of Ordinance A which is a vote for murals on all commercial buildings. But more broadly, I'm here to talk about governing philosophy. All of you are here, I have to assume, because you love this little city. <clears throat> sure, you're paid, but barely, we know that. We all know that it's a stipend. And it doesn't cover the many, many hours that you spend in council meetings debating for our greater good, or the countless committee meetings, or the hours spent reading ordinances researching policy, and it certainly doesn't cover the late night phone calls with constituents and the early morning emails and the time that you spend listening to us complain about potholes over and over and over. But you wouldn't be here if you didn't love this city. If you didn't believe that by investing those hours you were making a difference and hoping to make Norwood a better place for future generations. So I'm asking you to think about what kind of policy it is that you spend your time here in council working to put into place. Let it be the kind of policy that expresses that love and that hope, and that doesn't just hold tight to what is, but opens up what could be. 
Norwood's history is rich, but it's also deeply scarred. This is a city with people who are strong and work hard for their community and for what they have. We have a history of beautiful parks and in-ground public pools and street-side gardens and good jobs, but there's also a history of all that taken away. It makes sense that there's a fear of investment here. Why build something up if it can be washed away in a flood or moved out of town at the whim of a faceless corporation? So I see it as your job in council to build layers of strong policy to protect citizens from anything bad that you possibly can. So diversity of jobs and housing here, streets and water systems with con constant investment and long-term plan, parks with a sustainable infrastructure. But I also see it as your job to see the best in this city and its citizens and govern out of hope and trust rather than fear. It's true that if we build that micro park, it could fall into disrepair. And it could, but it could also flourish as a meeting place for new neighbors. And it's true that, that new park benches could attract homeless people, but they could also build community as a place for new parents with strollers to stop and actually meet one another. The planners on our street corners, they could go untended with weeds, but they don't. And they're a small, beautiful sign signal that somebody gives a shit. Anything beautiful or good that you do in your time here in office has the potential for being torn down or ruined somehow, right? And you know that. You know that and you do it anyway because you love Norwood and you love Norwoodians. You're placing your trust in the hope that all these meetings and all these readings and all these ordinances add up to a better city for your kids and your kids' kids. If you pass a mural ordinance for only our strictly commercial zones, that will already be a huge step forward. A big beautiful mural on the pike would signal to anyone passing that Norwood cares and that we've, we're moving forward with progress. But it's by passing it for the corner stores and small businesses that you place the most tr trust and hope in your citizens. Um, like, like, like I said earlier, Norwood was built as a walkable city, right? We can all walk our children to school here, all of us. That's amazing. That's the stuff that small town Americana dreams are made out of. But the truth is that we all walk by a lot of blighted areas too, boarded up storefronts, businesses that have been closed so long it's no longer clear what they even once might have been. I can envision a Norwood with more corner shops, a deli, a place to buy bagels, a place to meet neighbors for coffee. It's true you could take a pulling off period, you could ask local small business owners to wait another six months or nine months or a year, but that delays the conversation and it means that we do all of this all over again. Or you could express, Nor express Norwood's best intentions for the city now. Place that hope and trust in the hands of your citizens now and make the statement that Norwood is a good place to do business, that Norwood values talent and creativity and investment and isn't going to stand in the way of progress. Because yes, someone could put up a mural of something distasteful and someone could ruin a mural with graffiti and yes, a mural could fall into disrepair. disrepair. But I think that we build good policy to protect us from whatever you can and then you set your own fears aside and you assuage the really very real fears of your constituents who we know only want what's best because you're here because you believe better of us. It's your job to see the best in this city and trust that mirrors here will fulfill their best purposes of revitalization. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Jason Province. Good evening, gentlemen and lady. Um, my name is Jason Provins. I live at 4113 Floral Avenue. Uh, and I have to admit, I've missed you guys. Um, I'm usually a regular attender in this COVID season, and my military duty has really kept me from seeing you all. So it's good to be back. Um, my wife brought me over there. Uh, she'll probably speak a little later. Um, and she said, hey, Jason, we really need a guy's voice on this mural issue. <laughs> um, and when she first asked me to do it, I was like, I don't think I'm for murals. Um, they change the space. I'm kind of a uniform type of guy. Um, so I don't know if I can really speak to it um, as poignantly as she probably would like me to. I then started to think about our community. And I thought about my place here and what I wanted to do um, and how I wanted to spend my time. And it's really to leave this place better than I found it for the next generation. And three things really came to mind 
Uh, I call them joyful interventions. Uh, the first one was when I was reading about New York City and how they turned things around. Uh, one of the ways in which they did that is they started playing classical music at their high crime areas. And they found that crime decreased uh, just by the introduction of classical music. I then thought about the time a couple weeks ago I was out mowing my lawn and my sister and her husband and my new niece waved me down as they were on their way to Wasson Way to go see the mural for the first time. Uh, and then finally, uh, I brought it back to my military service. I thought about Walt Disney, and I thought about how, in a very controversial manner, he leaned in to World War II. He said, we as a company are going to do this because we believe in it. And he was one of the first people to speak out about it. And what he did was he took his skill set, which was artwork, and he created patches for soldiers to build morale. Um, it changed the way in which we entered World War II. Um, art has an impact. It brings joy. And so while I was hesitant at first to support this initiative to say, yes, I'm for murals, uh, and I'm even willing to try to convince or sway my council's decision, um, I stand before you today swayed by these things because art can change an environment and make it a very positive one. And I think that's what I want to see for Norwood um, when I'm long gone. I want to see a positive community that remembers the times that we had to make the hard decisions that maybe everybody wasn't on board with, um, but one that is full of joy. So thank you guys for letting me speak. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Next, Amanda McLaughlin. Hi, uh, my name is Amanda McLaughlin, and I live at 1741 Mills Avenue. And I'm here just to say that I support beautiful murals that are approved through very organized policies and procedures in Norwood. Thanks. Thank you. Next, Diane Douglas. Hi, I'm Diane Douglas. I live at 2314 Madison Avenue, and I've been a resident in Norwood for 55 years. I graduated from Norwood High School, and my three children also graduated from Norwood. And I love our city. And I would like to see, I'd like to support murals in, in our city. Um, often our urban commercial districts tend to look very hard with all the brick and cement. But art adds vibrancy to the community. Everybody coming down Montgomery Road could see those beautiful colors and design, and it adds warmth. It shows that people care about what their city looks like. Our art can create a sense of place and pride in our city. It also can showcase our history. Just imagine a mural depicting the history of the U.S. Plain Card Company. Art can create a destination that others want to visit. Like he mentioned his family wanting to see the mural on Wasson Way. In downtown Cincinnati, Artworks has mural tours all over the city. Maybe someday Norwood, they have their own Blink Festival and showcase our, our, our uh, murals. Murals are a great way to beautify our city. Our vintage brick and mortar streetscapes can be made beautiful with color and design. And therefore, I believe Norwood deserves good things, and I think murals would be a good thing for Norwood. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Taylor Brothers. Hi there, everybody. I'm Taylor Provins. Um, I also live at 4113 Floral Avenue um, in Ward 2. Um, as you can see, my husband and I don't always agree, but, but we do now. So um, I just want to say, um, first, I always want to thank you guys because I think you have the toughest job that um, 
well, just the toughest job. Um, I know I always say I could never do it. So thank you. And also thank you for taking your time to listen to not only myself, but everyone who's going to speak to you tonight. And I just, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I think murals would just be absolutely wonderful to have in our city that's already so eclectic and amazing and beautiful. I think it would just be something that would just add that little, I don't know, is panache the word I'm looking for, um, to our city. And it would bring so many more things. So I just, I really want to just wish you guys, or hope you guys are really thoughtful in your decision um, process and um, the policies that you're going to make um, when it comes to murals. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Jerry Hoff. Hi, good evening. I'm Jerry Hoff. I don't live in Norwood anymore, actually. I uh, bought my first house here back in 86 and raised my kids here. I've got my business at the corner of Sherman and Allison, and I have a number of rental properties, uh, houses, apartment buildings uh, that I've invested in in Norwood for the last 30 years. Um, I'd like to voice my support for murals in general, and I'd like to specifically uh, speak to the mural I was hoping to uh, paint on the south-facing large ugly brick wall of my building that faces the post office. It had been my intention to paint a, a blue sky with a field of sunflowers in front of it, and that was it. I, I thought it was a, a simple thing that would beautify what was otherwise just a plain brick wall. Um, I don't know what the city of Cincinnati has done to uh, provide such an atmosphere for really attractive and impressive murals scattered all over Cincinnati, but I'd like to hope that we, as, uh, as a city, can do something similar so that those types of randomly uh, found beautiful pieces of urban art can be part of Norwood as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next, and forgive me for butchering your name, but the Stach, Stacha? It's Stacia. Stacia. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Stacia Yent. I live at 5143 Rolston Avenue in Ward 4. Um, apart from a brief nine month stint at a college upstate. I've lived in Norwood my entire life until I transferred back to UC. I was born here. I was attended Norwood schools. Gary Hoff is my dad. <laughs> uh, so I, I have a vested interest in this community. My husband and I are hoping to purchase our first home in the next year. We very much want to do that in Norwood. And as somebody who works in a creative field and as somebody who spent their entire life working in and working towards creative aspirations, I can't tell you how often art is undervalued and underappreciated. And I also can't overstate how much it enriches our lives every single day in so many things that we do. The addition of beautiful murals within Norwood would be no exception to that fact. As Kate mentioned earlier, there's always going to be the risk that a certain piece of art won't appeal to another person, but a world without art isn't one that's worth living in, in my opinion. And we have to put trust and faith in our community. Murals in the city would not only enrich our city in bringing interest and, and vitality to it, but it en would enrich the lives of the people who live here, the people who choose this community every single day, and the people who visit us here. It would be a great way to showcase not just who we are now, but what a great way to tell the stories of our city, the history. I mean, I know there's been a lot of concern specifically over the future of buildings that people have a strong nostalgic tie to. For example, the uh, Allison Elementary School. That building has sat empty for years, and a big portion of that is because people are concerned about what's done with it. They went to school there. Their children went to school there. Their parents went to school there. They want to see it honored. What a great way we could honor it by creating a beautiful piece of artwork that will outlast so many of us. 
and so many other pieces of this city that could be honored if we just gave ourselves the opportunity to do so. It doesn't have to be in the preservation of a building that can't serve its original purpose. We need to move forward. And I think that this is a wonderful way to marriage the idea of moving forward with the honoring of our past and where we've been. So that's all I have to say. And thank you so much for your time. And um, specifically, I'd like to say that word four could really use a little color. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Julie Thompson. Hi there. My name is Julie Thompson. I live at 4228 Ivanhoe Avenue. I've also lived on Mills, the 1800 block of Mills Avenue. I've been a Norwood resident for 16, 17 years. I am a photographer. I'm an artist. I've had my studio space in my house. I've had it in various places um, around town. I've said things already at community council meetings. All these things have been said and said and said again. Um, and I was taking notes as people were talking. What am I going to say? Most importantly, one, yes, I wholeheartedly support murals coming into our city, first and foremost. Second, if I had to think of what I would hope people could hear, is that I am beyond delighted that Norwood is even at this threshold. Change is so hard. Generational consistency is comfortable. New things are kind of crazy making. And here we are, we are at this doorway. And it is not easy. It is not easy to step in one direction or the other. So I value the concept of council where you listen to what the people say. Take who, who is for this direction? Who's for this direction? Which direction has more feet going in? It's not easy. But I believe that we can all do hard things. And I am, yes, supportive of murals in all the places. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Hannah Roberts Gifford. Hi. Uh, my name is Hannah Roberts Gifford. I live at 5106 Carthage and we're at Ward 4. Uh, never been to a council meeting. Came this first time. Been watching more recently since we moved into our house on Facebook. Uh, obviously, socially, there's been a lot of discussion <laughs> around your and so that's one of the reasons I want to come today. I have a list here of things. The first thing that I always see whenever murals are brought up is content. The only argument that I've seen anyone make is that they're concerned about content. They don't want it in residential districts because residents might not like the content. <coughs> so I'm just going to read this list of reasons that it's highly unlikely you're going to find something inflammatory or offensive in a mural. In order for a mural to be legal, you have to get the approval of the building owner who, if something controversial or distasteful was painted on their property, would likely suffer economically. If someone wanted to display a controversial message, there are much easier and cheaper ways for that to happen than a mural. Banners are completely legal currently and they are much easier to produce. You would have to have a permit from the building department in the current ordinances being considered, which would necess necessitate organization and patience, which would weed out things like graffiti or anything like that being considered a mural. In the current ordinances being considered, there's also the hope of a, an art board, which would be given copies of plans for murals ahead of time. Should anything in a mural be unprotected under the First Amendment, such as obscenity, inciting violence, they would be aware ahead of time. That could be brought to council, that could be brought to whoever it needs to be brought to before anything was ever done and before a permit was granted. 
For most of Norwood's history, murals have been legal. The sign code that outlawed them is only about four or five years old. Most Norwood neighbors have been unaware that murals were illegal. And currently, as has been mentioned multiple times, murals on any structure, commercial or residential, are currently legal throughout Cincinnati with a stipulation that the building owner gets a permit beforehand. This is much more free than any of the ordinances that are being considered right now in Norwood, which would permit murals only in certain zones or on properties approved for commercial use. Offensive murals have not been a problem in Cincinnati, but murals have been a catalyst for economic development in neighboring communities that enjoy art employment opportunities for their youth and higher property values as well. Thanks. Thank you. Next, Vicki Gary. Good evening. My name is Vicki Gary. I live at 2242 Cameron Avenue. I'm a 27 year uh, resident of Norwood. I'm also um, an attorney. I've been practicing law in the state of Ohio since 1986. I'm also the former law director um, for the city of Norwood. Um, and I am here tonight to express my support for Ordinance A. I believe it should be passed. However, I believe there are, are some things that are defective that should be looked at um, again by council before it's passed this evening. Um, what are the things I'm talking about? Um, first of all, when I looked at the ordinances, I looked at the definition of a mural. Your definition in both A and B is a picture on an exterior surface of a structure. That sounds reasonable on its face, but then I started thinking, what about all of the residents in Norwood who have these big old homes who have or want to have stained glass windows to put those in? It'd be too bad that they couldn't do that because it would be a picture on an exterior surface of a structure. If you don't have a, a storm window protecting it, it's on that surface. So I would ask you to look at other definitions of a mural. And I know that this has come from the city of Cincinnati. It probably hasn't, they probably didn't look about, think about that. I spent over the weekend probably a good 20 hours researching, looking at, at different um, case law, reading um, law review articles, really kind of absorbed obsessed by, by the, the, the mural ordinance, and I was looking at the words. I started thinking about what is happening here. A mun mun I'm sorry, a municipality has the legal authority under your police and regulatory powers to limit First Amendment, um, the First Amendment to time, place, and manner, but your regulations must be narrowly tailored and the, and the Supreme Court cases say this, to achieve your intent. So what is your intent? Have you read it? Have you looked at your purpose? Why is it that this uh, mural, and everybody thinks, okay, it's just a mural. It's a right. It is a First Amendment expression. This is one of the most important things you're going to be voting on, really, because it has a lot of constitutional implications. If you get this wrong and the city is sued, you're going to face what's called a 1983 action. You're taking someone's, depriving them of their constitutional rights. And guess what? If you lose and they win, they're going to get their attorney's fees paid, probably. Because that's usually what happens with, with um, 1983 cases. So I ask you, please look at this. From, from a constitutional perspective. And I don't know if you have done that. I don't think you have so far. Um, so the purpose of the sign ordinance 
is supposed to promote the public health, safety, and general welfare of residents. And I'm reading from, from your intent. Residents and visitors in the city through reasonable, consistent, and non-discriminatory sign standards. Um, you have your purpose, I'm, I'm kind of running out of time, is um, you cannot, your, your purpose is to look at the, to protect the aesthetics and the safety, especially the traffic safety, it says. Well, that's ironic because in a few minutes you're gonna hear from somebody who wants to put up signs in your public um, areas and, and have, have them, are you gonna be looking at its safety? Are you gonna be looking at aesthetics? And what are the aesthetics? Is, is it pretty to be looking at a dilapidated, um, blighted property? Is that really what residents want in their neighborhoods? No. You know it isn't. What's the concern? People are concerned about the content, and that is something that cannot be prevented. You can't have something that everybody is going to like or no one is going to be offended by. There's no guarantee. However, I really believe you should do Ordinance A. If you don't, there's a good possibility that there will be an initiative on the next general election for murals everywhere. So think about that when you're voting. Think if you really do want everywhere. The other thing I was going to talk about is, and I'm, I'm out of time, so I will come. If you put it in a committee, I'll come and, and talk. I would be glad to talk with you about some other problems I'd see. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker, Emily Franzen. Hello, uh, my name is Emily Franzen. I'm from uh, 4207 Forest Avenue. I'll keep this short and sweet. Everyone's kind of said what I was going to say. Uh, I support murals on any sort of commercial uh, areas. So Ordinance A would be what I support. Uh, also, it would be really awkward if we had to paint over the mural. We just put on the basketball courts down at Waterworks. Oh, gosh, that would be... So wasteful. Oh, dear. Yeah. What I'm saying is there's murals already here. They're inside the city. <laughs> Watch out. Sorry. I'm just being a little silly because everyone said what I wanted to say. Have a good night. Thank you. Our next speaker, Meg Albers. I'm Meg Albers. I live at 1810 Hopkins. I'm here to set the record straight. As I watched the last council meeting, one member wanted to cancel the citywide street sale because of COVID-19. The street sale is an outdoor event, which is safer than an indoor event. I find it rather comical, irresponsible that anyone would expect and or encourage residents to at attend council meetings that are indoor gatherings for something like murals that aren't life and death like COVID-19. Just my observation. It would seem that some of our council members are confused about what I and my neighbors understood. It was rather insulting that you believe we were all so ill-informed to be, to be very clear, we know and knew the difference between the conditional use and the mural proposal. In fact, we had two separate petitions cover, covering both issues. My neighbors and I are intelligent, informed, and well-researched individuals. A few of you made it abundantly clear that you were the only informed individuals, and the neighbors are, and I were woefully uninformed. Thank you for your concern, but it was totally unwarranted. Because of an impending appeal, I cannot comment further. Now that I have cleared up that misunderstanding, I would like to speak to the process for murals. The neighbors on Hopkins collected signatures against the proposed murals. Our first mistake was giving them to Councilman Bonsall. He promptly took our signatures to the 1822 Hopkins property owners. While this may be legal because of the Open Records Act, it was seen as unethical. I am now in public asking that Mr. Bonsall submit proof that the owners formerly requested the petition. I'm sure they did not make such a request. I am sure he felt being friends with the people in most of the special interest groups that he was giving them all a heads up. There was a meeting at Millcrest Park. I believe it was supposed to I believed it was supposed to be with the neighbors around 1822 Hopkins that were for and against the murals. It became much more than that. 
The group that appeared overwhelmed the Hopkins neighbors so much so that my 84-year-old neighbor, speaking for two minutes, was interrupted, heckled, laughed at, and told that his concerns were not valid by the pro-muralists. He was so intimidated that he ended up leaving. I will add that the lesson about respecting your elders must have been missed by the opponents of this in the group. Another Hopkins neighbor was also interrupted and was told that he could, no, or could not continue to speak. The condemnation from the pro-muralists was very evident towards the anti-mural Hopkins neighbors. The pressure to allow them to speak over the people that actually live in the neighborhood was obvious. I would think that the people that live close to the building that the proposed mural would be placed should have had more consideration than those that do not live there at all and some pro-muralists didn't even live in Norwood. Mr. Breeden brought the list of our grievances and presented them to council. Mr. Bonsell responded that one of the grievances, the child that said move if you don't like it, was only nine years old. That would be true. What Mr. Bonsell conveniently admitted was that the reaction from the adults uh, that laughed and applauded proving that they indeed agreed with the nine-year-old. Funny that some of the very same people condemned the council person that said, if you don't like it, move. I find that hypocritical. The pro-muralists have made this situation much more than it had to be. I personally have been called unhinged, unwell, a whore, a racist, a drug addict, a homophobe, and an art hater. The keyboard warriors are the same people that are in various special interest groups. These people purported themselves to be open-minded, accepting, progressive thinkers and have proved, proved they are none of those things. If you disagree with them, they will go on attack. This group set a discourse of cancel culture or group shaming. I personally call this the shut up culture. Shame on them. The Hopkins Avenue neighbors and I have been bullied, belittled, stalked by those in the special interest group. These groups make up less than 1% of Norwood's population, I might add. While there are many that do not want murals, most do not want to be involved after witnessing the shut up cancel culture online. This whole situation became a circus and it started because one, of council, one councilman doing something that was seen as deceitful by the residents of Hopkins, residents on Hopkins. We surely will not make that mistake again. Many members of this administration should be ashamed by the disrespectful treatment of Norwood residents. Um, I was told- Thank you, Mrs. Albers. Our next speaker is Pastor Sonny James. Good evening, uh, Pastor Sonny James, 1830 Hopkins Avenue, start. I first want to uh, say thank you for your service to this country, Jason. Anybody who will give of their self and their time and their life to make people like me and others their life better, I salute you and I thank God for you. Now, folks, let me just say, I am so excited to see so many diverse thinkers amongst us today. It's nice when we can have a gathering of residents coming together, whether we agree or disagree, the beginning to change is coming together. In Norwood, when we talk about murals, it's just one subject matter. Yes, although the history of Norwood is very important, what I find very distasteful as an African-American man, in case you haven't noticed, is when we get so much attention on all those very important issues, when we go around and we call folks racist, that's funny. <laughs> Not long ago, I was at Victory Park with one of our Hearing Every Perspective gatherings, and I was called the N-word multiple times. Other than Mr. Gabbard, 
I don't recall any of my neighbors coming up and saying, Pastor James, oh my God, that is terrible and that does not fairly represent who we are as a people. I like mirrors. Do I want them here? Well, but what I like is I like a community where we can all come together as one people, one heart, one agenda to advance people. At a previous council meeting, I appreciate the Pastor James Monitor here, but at last council meeting, Councilman Bonzel, after everyone voted to allow me to speak for a resident who couldn't be here, he says, wait a minute, we've had to listen to him for 10 minutes, and now he gets some more? Folks, that's a big, fat, juicy monitor there. But yet not one of my peers stood up and challenged and said, hey, we are not going to continue as old Norwood. Because as you saw tonight, wonderful people may have gone over just a little bit, but their hearts are right. When we continue to single out and separate people, I was at a, count, uh, a committee meeting just the other day. And I brought up, I thought, was very valid points that would help us move forward as a community. And at the end of it, the chairperson continued on with the agenda at hand. But the reason that I respect him is because afterwards he came up and said, Pastor James, I want to do better. Mr. Donardo, I appreciate it. It's not that we all have to agree, folks, but take a look around the country. Look and see what's really real in front of you. I have fought against my own peers not to come into this community and tear your behinds up. Hurt our innocent children innocently because they're angry because we don't give a darn. Why doesn't this room feel like this every council meeting? Well, if it takes all this, maybe we should all just bring buckets of paint and we'll get the whole neighborhood. But there are issues that really affect us as a community, folks. Let's begin to support each other and not our personal agendas. I want to say to a very nice man, our mayor, come in and have a heart to bring a lot of change. But folks, when I'm asking for economic inclusion, I'm not asking for us to be disingenuous with one another. If there are job postings, yes, everyone should have equal rights to them. But make sure when you send me something, send me something that's real and don't run me around the market. Let's get on from our past. We still have old Norwood here. And I want to make sure that we honor each other. Love each other. God bless you. I made it. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, uh, Amy Wolfenbarter. Um, Amy Wolfenbarter, 546 Carthage Avenue. Um, I'm not the type that typically likes to read as I stand up here. However, um, I got a lot to say tonight, and I don't want to miss any of it. So, um, I'm here tonight actually about the um, nuisance ordinance. Um, I guess I don't have to ask my first ask because it was removed from the agenda tonight. So, um, that works out a little bit. Um, I would though like to ask um, that when this comes before council that um, we please don't have all three readings of this thing and pass it as an emergency. No offense to anyone in this room um, that has spent a lot of time on this, 148 hours with five meetings and five drafts as of the committee meeting I think on August 17. Uh, however, I will slightly echo Pastor Sonny when I say that there's been a heck of a lot more time spent on murals than there has um, 
this paper that I read today. Um, like I said, five minutes goes by really quick. Um, please understand, renters, landlords, homeowners, businesses are all going to be affected by this ordinance much longer than 148 hours. While this ordinance has gotten down eight pages, it covers a lot, and it's not something that should just be shoved through. Um, unfortunately, I've not had the time to completely break it down or even put together a coherent argument. Not to mention, we only get to five minutes. And this is why I ask that this thing not be passed as an emergency and without significant more discussion. Um, as a longtime renter, this will backfire on renters financially. Landlords are going to want to recoup that money. Um, I'm not sure how landlords uh, are going to react to this. Um, will there be higher application fees, increased rents, affordability is already an issue. Will there be higher deposits? Will those with uh, misdemeanor or criminal charges, will they just not rent to those sort of people, people anymore? Will that make them getting home become even more difficult? Um, how many landlords are just going to sell and get out? And multifamilies, that's eight times in six months. I, is it per, per tenant? Is it the building entirety? If it's the building entirety and there's 29 units in that building, say two of them are a problem. Yeah, there's two people in there, they're a problem, they need to go. Between the two of them, say they each have six. Then say you have a single mom in another unit with a teenage son blasting the stereo while she's at work and she gets two. Does this woman now have to leave her home in a time when finding a new rental is extremely difficult? Curfew violation, haven't had a time to look up Chapter 530, so I'm not sure how that even plays into that. I don't know if any of you know 530. Um, 513, um, well, drug offenses, 513 and 2295. In one area, you point out felony, but you do include other drug offenses um, in that which are misdemeanors. 2925 happens to cover uh, the state code for cannabis. 513 is Norwood Drug Code. I would like to know how 513.15 plays into that. That is the ordinance for marijuana laws and penalties passed by 74% of Norwood voters. Uh, has cannabis been excluded from this language? What about medical marijuana patients? Have they been excluded from this language? Are cannabis persons who the majority of Norwood see no problem with going to lose their home for a new medication that maybe somebody on the task force doesn't agree with? Um, I'd like to look more into the 517, which is the public gambling portion of it, to see how that plays into it. Um, some about civil penalties, 56708, 56706, 56704. Do any of you know what those are without looking them up right now? To, that you would have been prepared to even vote on this tonight. Um, appeals boards, task forces, appropriating funds for reasonable expenses. What expenses? How much? Where's the money coming from? Uh, it's just too many unknowns up for interpretation, and um, it leads to uh, disaster. So thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Is Mr. Shows here? And we have uh, one more, Alana Johnson. Hello, my name's Alana Johnson, and I live at 3747 Ellesmere Avenue. And uh, I designed and painted the first uh, mural here in Norwood. Uh, it was on my home in Jefferson. And uh, I guess that set precedent because nobody, you know, did anything about it. I sold it with, with the mural on it. Uh, but I've lived from Loveland to Norwood, and uh, I've had many neighbors. And <coughs> over the course of those many years, uh, there's people, my neighbors, I didn't like their flag. I didn't like their dogs. 
I didn't like the religious statue. Some I didn't like their gnomes. I didn't like the rusty trucks in their driveway. I didn't like their Christmas decorations, or I didn't like their political signs. But I loved my neighbors. And the point is, uh, the bigger issue here isn't um, murals. I think the bigger issue here is community. And we can't always like uh, everything that our neighbors do. There, we need more diversity in Norwood. And I, for one, welcome new businesses, fresh ideas, fresh paint, and uh, I welcome all, all people who are trying to make uh, Norwood fresh and new. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, that concludes our speakers. Moving, moving on to item I-2, Finance, Budget, and Audit Committee Report. Mr. Denardo. Sure. Um, on August 31st, we uh, uh, held a, a third quarter budget review. So I'll just read the report that I submitted. To the Honorable Council of the City in Norwood, we, the Committee, Finance, Budget, and Audit, to whom it was referred, the third quarter budget review. Uh, the, com the committee reviewed revenue earned to date against expected pacing of 58%. Uh, the 58% uh, came from seven divided by 12, seven months out of a year. It was noted that the treasurer expects August to continue at or above pacing. Uh, the committee reviewed expenses versus budget by department and account and drafted a list of follow-ups I drafted a list of follow-ups to relevant budget owners. Um, I will uh, have these responded to at the next committee meeting. Next, we heard a citizen comment that economic inclusion has a place in this committee, so it will be considered. Lastly, we wrapped up with acknowledgement that these reviews should be quarterly uh, with department heads, uh, so that too will be considered. Uh, this was respectfully submitted by me and signed by uh, Mr. Bonzo, Braden, and Kesh. Thank you, Mr. DiNardo. Mr. Braden? I'll second that. Oh, I'd like to make a motion. I'm make sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Make a motion that we uh, receive and file the committee report. Thank you, Mr. Braden. Mr. Bonzel? I'd like to second that. Second by Mr. Bonzel. Any discussion? Mr. Braden? Well, thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to make a note that my first name is spelled wrong on this document, so maybe we can, maybe we can correct that clerical error in the future. Thank you. You got it. Sure, Andy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brady. <laughs> Any further discussion? Mrs. Williams, please call the roll. Mr. Bonsall? Yes. Mr. Gabber? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. The motion passes. Moving on to item I-3, Committee of the Whole Report. <laughs> To the Honorable Council, the City of Norwood, Ohio, we, your committee of the whole, to whom was referred personnel policy manual, beg leave to submit the following report. The committee reviewed the personnel policy manual, discussed the full-time unclassified employees with more than four years of continuous service to the City of Norwood and how their benefits would be affected. Mr. Tim Gary spoke to Council regarding how the proposed manual would affect his benefits. Mr. Ryan Woodward of Clemens Nelson and Associates spoke to Council on how the, doc the document was prepared. Mr. DiNardo summarized that the general consensus was to have two ordinances at the next council meeting, one regarding the manual and the second to grandfather the unclassified employees adversely affected. The law department was to draft both. Respectfully submitted, Ken Miracle, Chairperson, Mr. Bonsell, Mr. Braden, Mr. DiNardo, Mr. Gabbard, Mr. Kelsch, and Mr. Thompson. Mr. DiNardo. Um, I uh, motion that we submit and file this. Motion by Mr. DiNardo. Mr. Thompson. I'll second that. Second by Mr. Thompson. Any discussion? Please call the roll, Mrs. Williams. Mr. Bonsall? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. I'm sorry, guys. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. Motion passes. Moving on to item I-4, Economic Development Committee Report. Mr. Gabbard? Dated 8-2020 uh, to the Honorable Council of the City of Norwood, 
Ohio We, uh, your Economic Development Committee, to whom was referred um, the PLK, which is the uh, Playing Card Site Development. Beg leave to support uh, to submit the following report. The PLK came, gave a presentation uh, of, the pres of the proposed site. Uh, respectfully su submitted, Chairperson Michael Gabbard, Mr. Eric Gennardo, Mr. Eric Thompson, and Mr. James Bonzel. Thank you, Mr. Gabbard. <coughs> Mr. Gennardo. Motion that we receive and file. Motion by Mr. Gennardo to receive and file. Mr. Thompson. Second. Second by Mr. Thompson. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonzel. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Geraci. Yes. Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. Donardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. And Mr. Braden. Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. The motion passes. Moving on to item I-5, we have Economic Development Committee report. Mr. Gabbard. Dated 9 2 20 to the Honorable Council of the City in Orwood, Ohio. We, your economic development, uh, was to whom was referred murals. Beg leave to support the following report. The committee uh, is sending two ordinances to the law department to be drafted for um, council regarding murals. Respectfully submitted, Chairperson Michael Gabbard, Mr. DiNardo, Mr. Bonzel. Thank you, Mr. Gabbard. May I have a motion, Mr. Thompson? We receive and file. Motion by Mr. Thompson to receive and file. May I have a second? Yeah. Mr. DiNardo? Any discussion? Mr. Thompson? I just realized that uh, we missed my signature on this report and accidentally got my signature on the last report that I was not here for. So we'll correct that and uh, get those files. Thank you. You sir. weren't at the 20th, yeah. you were right. at the 7th. Right, I signed right. on one. Easy fix. Thank you. Any further comments? Mr. Bonson. Um, so I've moved that we receive and file the report uh, as amended. Thank you, Mr. Bonson. Second. Second by Mr. Thompson. I'm sorry, what was the new motion? The, mo the motion was to receive and file the report as amended. Oh, okay. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsell? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. Motion passes. Moving on to item I-6, Housing, Health, and Public Safety Committee report. Mr. Geraci. Committee report, Housing, Health, and Public Safety, 8-17-2020. To the Honorable Council of the City of Norwood, Ohio, we, your Committee of Housing, Health, and Public Safety, whom was referred chronic nuisance ordinance, Begley to submit the following report. The final draft was discussed, and we would like to recommend it out to full council. It has been sent to the law department for a full draft. Many adjustments had been made due to the public input throughout six meetings. Thank you, Mr. Geraci. Uh, respectfully submitted. Mr. Matthew Geraci, Mr. Michael Gabbard, Mr. Chris Kelch, and Mr. James Bonzel. Thank you, Mr. Geraci. <clears throat> Mr. Bonzel. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would move that we receive and file this report. Thank you, Mr. Bonzel. Mr. DiNardo. I would second. Second by Mr. DiNardo. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonzel. Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Brayton? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. Motion passes. Moving on to item K1. Second reading of ordinances and resolutions. Resolution declaring intent to sell unneeded or surplus firearms and related equipment by internet auction during calendar year 2020. Mr. Thompson. We move that we have the second reading of this ordinance. Motion by Mr. Thompson to have the second reading. Mr. Bonzel. Uh, I'll second that. Second by Mr. Bonzel. Any discussion? Please call the roll. 
Mr. Bonsell? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting on. Mrs. Williams, may we have a second reading? Resolution declaring intent to sell unneeded or surplus firearms and related to equipment by internet auction during calendar year 2020 and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Moving on to item L1, introductory readings of ordinances and resolutions. Item L1, ordinance consenting to an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, regarding the upgrade of the traffic signals at the intersections of Montgomery Road and Sherman Avenue and Montgomery Road at Williams Avenue by installing audible pedestrian buttons, et cetera, and accepting maintenance of these upgrades and declaring an emergency. Mr. Bonson. I just would like to inquire about the urgency of this. Is this something that needs to be passed soon? I didn't know if the administration or the law department had an opinion on that. Can I address that? Mayor Schneider? Thank you. Yeah, it is, it is urgent. We'd like to get this funding in place. This is ODOT funding that will take care of the majority of this improvement. We do have a uh, blind or a, a blind pedestrian who frequents the uh, intersection at Montgomery and Sherman that has been requesting this and it's been a long drawn out process to get this uh, in place. We did one at Mills in Montgomery previously. Uh, these two, I, I would ask that we move quickly to improve the pedestrian safety for these blind individuals. Thank you, Mayor Schneider. Mr. Bonsall. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so just hearing that, I would move that we have all three readings of this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Bonsall. Motion by Mr. Bonsall to have all three readings. Mr. Gabbard. I second the motion. Second by Mr. Gabbard. <coughs> Any discussion? Mr. Bonsall. Uh, I just had a question about the functionality of these things. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that these things will only create noise uh, when a button is pushed and not you know, all day and all night you know, into eternity. I didn't know if there was clarification on that. Mayor Steiner? They, they actually have sensors on them that will, when there's loud traffic noise in the area, um, they the the noise, the actual volume of it goes down. But when there's, in the evenings, when there's no, no real traffic noise, it's down lower. But they do have sensors that when you press the buttons, it will activate them, yes. Okay. Just, yeah, perfect. Just want to make sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Steiner. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Sorry, guys, I'm catching up. Okay, Mr. Bonzel. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Geraci. Yes. Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Braden. Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. The motion passes. Mrs. Williams, may we have all three readings, please. Ordinance consenting to an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation regarding the upgrade of the traffic signals at the intersections of Montgomery Road and Sherman Avenue and Montgomery Road at Williams Avenue by installing audible pedestrian buttons and accepting maintenance of these upgrades and declaring an emergency. Ordinance consenting to an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation regarding the upgrade of the traffic signals at the intersections of Montgomery Road and Sherman Avenue and Montgomery Road at Williams Avenue by installing audible pedestrian buttons and etc. and accepting maintenance of these upgrades and declaring an emergency. Ordinance consenting to an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation regarding the upgrade of the traffic signals at the intersections of Montgomery Road and Sherman Avenue and Montgomery Road at Williams Avenue by installing audible pedestrian buttons etc. and accepting maintenance of these upgrades and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Mr. Gabbard. Make a motion we pass the ordinance. Motion by Mr. Gabbard to pass the ordinance. Mr. Brayton. I'll second that. Second by Mr. Brayton. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonzel. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Geraci. Yes. Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Brayton. Yes, ma'am. All members present voting aye. The motion passes. Thank you. 
Moving on to item L3. Ordinance establishing the Norwood Arts Board. Mr. Gary. <laughs> Mr. President, I would re make a motion that uh, we place ordinances L3, L4, and L5 back into economic development to, um, to uh, clear up some language um, and make sure that we get it right. I have a motion by Mr. Gabbard to place L3, L4, and L5 back into Economic Development Committee. Mr. Braden? I'll second that. We have a second by Mr. Braden. Discussion? Mr. Drace. Uh, question to Mr. Gabbard. Will there be any public discussion at this meeting? No. No, just kidding. <laughs> Of course it will be. There always are, is it, at, uh, at least at economic development and any other committee that we have, there will be public discussion. Um, people can still come like they, they have. We've had a lot of really good discussion um, from public, from council people, from the administration, from the law department. So we've, we've, we've had a lot. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Dracy. Mr. Bonsall? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you know, I, I definitely <laughs> understand this. Uh, I heard about this, uh, you know, tonight for the first time. And I definitely understand the, the need to get, to want to get this right. And I, and I agree. Is there anything, I just would ask uh, maybe uh, through the chair to the, to the previous council person or to the law department, uh, but is, is there anything that we can do here? Can we take a 10 minute recess and, and reword something? I just wasn't sure all the things that needed to be uh, redone and whether we potentially could just address those now. So, thank you. Mr. Gabbard or Mr. Moore? Mr. Moore? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. There's, there's a few, there's, there's a couple of issues. Um, one is the count of members on the arts board. Because um, I did a first draft to send it to the committee. They read it. I read it again. Um, and then when it was put into ordinance form, it was read by, so we all missed the fact that the numbers are wrong, that they disagree within that. So just one of those things. You cannot proofread your own work. And then at the committee meeting, which was last Wednesday, followed immediately by the committee of the whole meeting, in which involved quite a bit of discussion, and then the effort to get the packet, you get the ordinances done on Thursday so the council could have them on Friday, so they could go for the long weekend, and nobody looked at them, real, I think, until today or maybe last night. So, and what happened is we added a provision to, a, it to allow, um, and Ms., this is the other thing that Mrs. Gary was going to mention, um, that to, to allow, uh, property owned by city, Norwood City school buildings to have murals in any district. Um, and going quickly, um, quite honestly, it glossed over my head that, that that raises a real speaker discrimination uh, problem. Um, and I think Mr. Gabbard, I think he spoke with Mrs. Gary today, would like to take another look at the definition. Um, I thought the definition w works. Um, and as I said to Ms. Mrs. Gary called me today, as I said to her, I said, this is the problem with this, is that there is no, I cannot think of, and I have not seen a mural ordinance that I can't come up with a constitutional challenge to, that I can argue somehow violates the Constitution, other than simply there are no regulations, do whatever you want. Um, or there are nothing, you can't do anything. Um, and so I would suggest that we take, as, take more time rather than less in order to avoid unforeseen consequences from making a change on the fly. That's a long answer, but that's my answer. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Bond. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, I can definitely appreciate that. Um, you know, I think that the arts board thing could have been easily amended to three, uh, which is what the intent was. Um, I think we could have either scratched um, on Norwood City School District properties or changed it to uh, on any uh, property where, which is used as a school potentially for 100 or more students. Uh, I think we could have, but I, I do think that hearing the definition one, if there's not a, an easy substitute right now for it, then I guess that does make sense. But yeah, I just want to, it's been two years. I know that two more weeks is not going to be the end of the world. Uh, I was just hoping that potentially we could find some way, like I said, to take, a, uh, take some time and, and just get it right here. But uh, you know, I think referring it to committee, it sounds like then it's going to be the right call. So I'm disappointed, but uh, I will support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonsall. Mr. Dracy. I, I would suggest to 
the um, Economic Development Committee that, and I guess I'll take Pastor James' words here, and how about we take a little bit of time with this instead of trying to push and rush things through. I know that with the chronic nuisance ordinance, we've spent countless, countless hours since February working on this ordinance, um, discussing, you know, having meetings, having public comment at the, at the committee meetings. Um, you know, and yet I, I feel that this here, these three ordinances versus the one ordinance that the Housing, Health, and Public Safety is putting out seems to have taken less time than what the chronic nuisance ordinance has. Yeah, we can go back to last year. We can go back to year, a year ago or whatever. You can go back as far as you want, but there still wasn't that much, much discussion a year ago, two years ago on this. Now, I also would say that we need to split the difference on this. You know, I was originally completely against murals. Absolutely no murals, plain and simple, period, out of the question, okay? I heard one side. I heard the other side. I said, let's split the difference and leave it in an industrial. Leave it on something like a loss and away, where a resident doesn't have to see it. You know, not everybody likes murals. Not every resident likes murals. What your neighbor likes is, is completely subjective. You know, what they like isn't what I like. What the person to my right doesn't like, I may like. This is all completely subjective. So what we have to do is we represent the entire residential community of Norwood. As it was said back in May, and I got hammered a lot for this, you're not inclusive. You huffed and puffed at an ordinance that was three readings and rushed through because it was a week before it came into play. You're not inclusive. You're racist. You're homophobic. But I voted, that or I voted for that ordinance to go through or that resolution. Okay? So... As we look at council member, or as we look at the residents, you know, I don't feel that a lot of us are being inclusive as far as residents are concerned. We have one side, we have the other side. Again, I didn't want murals at all in Norwood. Lived here 38 years. I've lived here probably longer than half, 90% uh, of the crowd that was here. So, you know, I was completely against them from the get-go. I've changed my tune to split the difference. I've changed my tune to help one side and the other side. And I think we just need to take a longer look at this than trying to rush it through. Thank you, Mr. Geraci. Mr. Geraci. Okay. Anyone else? Motion on the floor by was by Mr. Gabbard, second by Mr. Braden, to remove items L3, L4, and L5 back into the Economic Development Committee. Please call the roll. Mr. Bunzel? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. The motion passes. Moving on to L6, ordinance amending designated locations within the city of Norwood for the posting of ordinances, resolutions, statements, orders, proclamations, notices, and reports required by law and declaring an emergency. Mr. Thompson. Um, kind of a strange request here. I mean, we have all three readings of this ordinance. And include within the first reading the places with where these new postings will be, so people at home can hear if they don't have a copy of this ordinance. So you'd like the first reading in its entirety, and the second and third by caption. Is that what you're asking, Mr. Thompson? Well, it's, uh, I don't know that it needs to be. It's yeah, just IRD. There's just a bullet list of the places yeah. where yeah, we're okay. going to be I, doing it. And I just thought we could let people know section what those one. are. Gotcha. So we have uh, a motion by Mr. Thompson. 
Yeah, Mr. DiNardo? That's good. Discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsell? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present voting aye. The motion passes. Mrs. Williams, may we have all three readings? And in the first reading, Mr. Thompson asking for all the locations. Ordinance amending designated locations within the city of Norwood for the posting of ordinances, resolutions, statements, orders, proclamations, notices, and reports required by law and declaring an emergency. Whereas in limited circumstances, Ohio Revised Code Section 731.25 permits the publication of ordinances and resolutions by posting in public places within the city of Norwood. And whereas to accomplish the purpose of ORC Section 731.25, the Council passed Ordinance 12-2011 on March 8, 2011 and codified that ordinance as Norwood codified Ordinance Section 123.01. And whereas since the enactment of Ordinance 12-2011 and Norwood codified Ordinance Section 123.01, the Norwood Service League is no longer operating at 2071 Lawrence Avenue, and the City of Norwood has developed two new online locations for the publication of documents by the City of Norwood. Now therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Norwood, State of Ohio, that Section 1, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code, Section 731.25, the following places are hereby designated the locations for the posting of ordinances, resolutions, statements, orders, proclamations, notices, and reports as required by law. The first is Norwood City Hall, 4645 Montgomery Road. The second is Norwood Community Center, 1810 Cortland Avenue. The third, Norwood City Health Department at 2059 Sherman Avenue. The fourth, Norwood City School Administration Building, 2132 Williams Avenue. The fifth, Norwood Branch of Public Library, 4325 Montgomery Road. The sixth, City of Norwood website news page at norwoodohio.gov forward slash news. The seventh, City of Norwood Facebook page at NorwoodOhio.gov, www.facebook.com forward slash NorwoodOhio.gov. Section 2, such postings shall be for the period of not less than 15 days prior to the effective date of the ordinance or resolution. Section 3, this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency measure for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, and welfare of the inhabitants of the city and shall take effect immediately upon its adoption so that the city's documents can be properly published by the city and noticed by its stakeholders. Ordinance amending designated locations within the city of Norwood for the posting of ordinances, resolutions, statements, orders, proclamations, notices, and reports required by law in declaring an emergency. Ordinance amending designated locations within the city of Norwood for the posting of ordinances, resolutions, statements, orders, proclamations, notices, and reports required by law and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. May I have a motion? Mr. Thompson. I will move that we pass the ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Motion by Mr. Thompson. May I have a second? Mr. DiNardo. Thank you, Mr. DiNardo. Any further discussion? Mr. Thompson. I just want to say uh, thanks to who put this together to, uh, for including a couple of different digital ways for people to get a hold of these. I think it's going to make it a lot easier for uh, information to be uh, accessible for, for our residents. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Anything further? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. The motion passes. Moving on to item L7. Ordinance confirming the unused sick leave benefit to all full-time classified employees with more than four years of continuous service with the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring emergency. <laughs> 
Mr. Bernardo. I would uh, motion that we have all three readings. Motion by Mr. Bernardo to have all three readings. Uh, have a second. Mr. Mr. President, I hate, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm out of order, I know, but, um, and I appreciate the council passing this, um, assuming council is going to pass it. Um, but it just occurred to me that given the language in the policy manual ordinance that supersedes every previous ordinance, we might want to switch the order of these two. Okay. If that's your legal opinion, then we'll... Would you like to rescind your... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do... Yeah. Good point. Excellent point. We will now make item... Just we'll just... We'll just... We'll just Okay. Yeah, and I'll just discuss kind of why they're, they're okay. separated. Let me let me read this. So we'll go to item L7. This is ordinance adopting the personnel policy and procedure manual for the city of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Same. Thank you, Mr. Leonardo. May I have a second? This is to pass the policy. Oh. Kelsch. Mr. Kelsch. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Kelsch. Motion by Mr. DiNardo. I'm confused. We didn't read the policy. We didn't, haven't read the ordinance yet, so. I just read, I just read that part. Okay. Still need the other two readings before we pass it. So, my, sorry. My motion was, now that we're switching up the order, to have all three readings of the policy, Gotcha. Hopefully we passed that because we were head nodding before. Okay, and this so sick leave will be next. Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry, guys. You're good. Any discussion? Mr. Bonds. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, so um, I had sent some changes. I mean, and there were some changes that, like, were important. For example, just where there was some, some true conflicts. Uh, I was just curious about the status of those changes. Are we considering an ordinance that takes into account those changes? Uh, yeah, I don't know if, who has the information there. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. Bonzo, I received your email, and I did go through those changes, and I discussed them with Ryan Woodward, and just about all of those changes are acceptable and can be taken care of within the policy manual and the way the policy manual is written. There is the, the city reserves the right um, to, to alter the policy manual as necessary, um, this is this it also says this guide this guide is not a contract and should not be construed to impose as a contractual obligation so when you talk about um, health care issues health care is going to change we know that and there are issues within here that we're going to have to address as we go through the the um, typographical errors all can be corrected without any challenge to it really mr. Bond. Yeah, just a follow-up question to that. Um, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate you, that reply. So um, when we talk about amending this, or if we want to change policies in the future, um, will a new policy and procedure book, or will the new pol like the actual new policy, will council, since we're approving the initial one, will council be approving uh, changes to these policies in the future? That question for uh, I can answer. If there are... If there are major monetary concerns within it, then they need to come to council for budgetary considerations, absolutely. But if it is a, a policy, if it's a, a small um, administrative procedure, then no, that would not come to council for approval. Mr. Bonson? Thank you. So I guess I'm, and this is not, has nothing to do with the current book, but I guess I don't understand then so why is council having to pass an ordinance to approve this policy manual initially if it can just be changed by any administration in the future without that a future council approving it? I guess I'm kind of still kind of confused at that because if, you know, if it was just so that council expressed our support, then in my opinion, we should just pass a resolution and just express our support, but let the executive team, you know, the different offices just implement it. Um, again, I just would love to hear more about that. Mr. Moore? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, and we have this discussion about various things every so often. It's a question, do we need an ordinance to do this or not? Um, for this particular, for the first one of these, because this is designed to supersede previous ordinances, and not just the appointed person, but there's some other things, 
that are out there. Because this is designed, that parts of this are designed to have essentially the force of law and overturn something that had previously been passed by council, then council should pass this as an ordinance. If there are changes that come forward, it, for whatever it is, it may be, you know, disciplinary policy, it may be the number of positions, it may be, um, you know, any number of things that are in here. If it's, if it's something that is simply within the realm of the administration or an appointing authority to do on their own initiative, then that's probably not something that will come to council unless the administration, the law department at the time decides council really needs to be involved and know that this is going on. Um, but if it's something that's actually affects, you know, if we're going to add people that are that are listed or positions that are listed um, in the policy as not as appointed positions or, or whatever positions, if we're if the policy cannot add new positions without an ordinance that would approve that. So there are. It's going to depend on what exactly it is. The vast majority of this stuff is entirely within the discretion of the administration to do and, and to adopt. But there are parts of it that have the force of law. And as just a huge chunk all at once, it's my opinion it would be better for council to say, yeah, we're on board with this. But this one, yes, needs to be in ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Any other discussion? Mr. Bonsell? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I'm just going to say that hearing that, I really uh, would like more time to consider. So I'm personally going to vote no on the three readings. Uh, if the rest of the council does want to go forward, I can understand that. But I'd like more time to think about that. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Bonsall. Any further discussion? Mrs. Williams? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsall? No. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Brayton? Yes, ma'am. All members present voting. We have six yes, one no. Motion passes. There we have all three reads. Mrs. Williams? Ordinance adopting the personnel policy and procedural manual of the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Ordinance adopting the personnel policy and procedure manual of the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Ordinance adopting the personnel policy and procedure manual of the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Mr. Geraci. Make a motion to pass. Motion by Mr. Geraci. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Second by Mr. DiNardo. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsall? No. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Brayden? Yes, ma'am. All members present. We have six yeses, one no. The motion passes. Moving on to item L8, ordinance confirming the un use sick leave benefit to all full-time unclassified employees with more than four years of continuous service with the city of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Mr. DiNardo. I'd ask that we have all three readings of this one as well. Motion by Mr. DiNardo to have all three readings. May I have a second? Mr. Gabbard? I second it. Second by Mr. Gabbard. Any discussion? Mr. DiNardo. Um, I'll just kind of help re-summarize the summary I gave at the Committee of the Whole, just for folks that didn't watch that one. Um, we originally, very quickly, uh, the city uh, administration worked with a group of lawyers, Clemson and um, Nelson, I think they were, put together a, a, a policy and procedure manual, kind of like an HR and labor uh, guidance and in there there were some uh, changes to um, a very select group of people that could have could that could have has the potential to impact their vacation time and has a, a dollar figure associated to that so uh, we decided not to move forward until that was addressed um, we went to the committee of the whole talked it a little out a little bit and realized um, it seemed like there were specifically four folks that there were quite a few head nods, I felt, um, that we wanted to take care of. I think fairness was a, you, a word that was used by two council members and the mayor. Um, and so we separated that from the main policy and procedure that we just passed to do two things. One, because we were advised to by the lawyers, because uh, we didn't want language in the policy that you know, could work, act as grandfathering in this group, but then be 
later construed and confusing. So we left that kind of pristine. We just passed that. This second ordinance was then requested uh, to try to address that fairness for, and I think it's four employees, but if I'm wrong, it's off by plus or minus one. Um, so what we're voting on is those vacation benefits um, and other uh, benefits that we felt would uh, um, be best served as grandfathered in for these select folks. So hopefully that, that kind of hit everyone. Thank you, Mr. Renardo. Mr. Thompson. Question to the law director I, and sort of a follow-up to uh, Mr. DiNardo. It appears that this ordinance only covers unused sick leave. And I believe, I was at least, I, I believe that we were talking a bit of a more broader uh, set of benefits that we were protecting uh, for these four people, uh, including, uh, for example, when their vacation kicks in and things like that. There were, uh, I, I, I thought that there were more than just the single issue of unused sick time. So uh, I was wondering if you could clarify that for me. Mr. Moore? Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson. I wish I could. Um, it was, and I'll tell you, this is part of the difficulty sometimes of this job is I sat through the, the committee of the whole meeting. Uh, Mr. Miracle sat through it. Uh, Mr. DiNardo sat through it. The mayor sat through it. Mr. Gary sat through it. And apparently we all came away with slightly different ideas of what it is the seven members of council and the mayor wanted to see out of that as to how many different ordinances, one ordinance, two ordinances. Um, and Mr. Gary and I have been contacted by several people over the last, uh, I'm going to say, 10 hours uh, to change this or that and move this or that. And so I think this adequately captures enough of what matters um, and is seems to be acceptable to everybody that um, contacted us. So uh, that's part, part of the problem of this stuff is I sit through a committee, you know, we, we, there's a committee, there's three or four people and they want to do something and it's trying to, okay, what is it that these four people want to do? Or for a committee of the whole meeting or all of councils, like, what is the thing that all seven members want uh, with the support of the administration, or at least not opposed enough to be vetoed by the administration to try to condense that into language that works, that everybody can get behind and accomplishes what we need to do. But this was one of those, it was a little muddled. This seems to be okay, um, and I think it accomplishes what we need to accomplish, the parts that are important, um, the, 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 big, the, the big issue. Um, the rest can be addressed in other, in other ways than the discretion allowed by the department heads, by elected officials. So we're okay with it. I guess that's the bottom line. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Go ahead. Well, Follow-up question. Mr. Thompson. When we say we're okay with this, are the four people who are being affected by this okay with this? Um, as I understand, yes, Mr. Gary's okay with it. Um, and we've not had, I think the others are, are seem to be as well. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Joyce. Maybe I missed it in the committee of the whole meeting, but I saw one person speak and I didn't hear of four people within the committee of the whole meeting. Now, granted, I was watching it on my cell phone while I had a soccer practice, but to me, it seemed like only one person was being affected by this. I'm not sure where people came up with four. Was that actually mentioned at the meeting? Yeah. Mr. Gabbard? Actually, the mayor mentioned that um, why don't we just do it with the people that have over four years experience, which equals four people is where that comes out. Mr. Moore, did you, did you want to? I saw your it, it, it's my, I, as I recall, it was Mr. Stitt first mentioned that and then Ms., uh, the mayor as well. So that it's four people that would be affected by this type of a policy. And there, sorry, never mind. I didn't write my hand. Mr. Nardo? There are a few other people, um, but... Some of the discussion, some of it during and some of it after, because I, when I was trying to try to figure out the most fair way to get the intent here, there were a few more, but they were people who had very short tenure or were of, the, of 2020. And so we thought, okay, the intent here is to protect people who have really accrued a bunch of stuff. And someone had from January 1st, May, or April, for one of, the, one of them, 
may not have accrued all those benefits, so it's not really something that we were in a huge need to protect. So it, it was a little more than four. I think we picked we as dangerous. The four years was picked because it was just kind of like that's the folks that we were trying to protect, and we weren't really that concerned with folks from April of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Narda. Any other discussion? Mr. Bonsall? Uh Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think it actually does affect more than four because uh, there are more than four people that are that have been here four years that are on that uh, unclassified uh, political appointees. But I don't think that matters, like the exact number. I think it's fine. Uh, I've talked to a few of them. I've talked to a few department heads. Um, you know, I'm fine with the ordinance as written. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonsall. Any further discussion? Mrs. Williams, please call the roll. Mr. Bonzel. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Geraci. No. Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Brayton. No. Forgive me, was that, was that a no? Yeah, there were two no's. There's five, five yeses, two no's. Mm -hmm. The no, motion fails. fails. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Bonsall, Bonsall, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would move that we have the first reading of this ordinance. Motion by Mr. Bonsall to have the first reading. Mr. Thompson. Second. Second by Mr. Thompson. Any discussion? Mr. Bonsall. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So uh, just kind of considering the way the uh, vote just went down, uh, we are going we could do a first reading of this, uh, or we could request that the law department uh, draft a new ordinance that uh, withdraws the emergency clause. Uh, having the emergency clause in here is going to require six votes uh, to approve it. So uh, even if we do the first reading today, we're still going to need one without the emergency clause. So um, I'm fine vote. I guess should I amend the motion to ask for a new ordinance? Can we amend? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we'll just we'll figure that out later. <coughs> but uh, for now, I guess I'd, I'd like us to support just doing one reading today. So the motion on the floor is to have the first read. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsall. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Duracy. No. Hmm? Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yep. Mr. Brayden. No. All members present voting. We have five yes, two no. Motion passes. We have the first reading. Ordinance confirming the unused sick leave benefit to all full-time unclassified employees with more than four years of continuous service with the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Moving on to item M, administrative report. Mayor Schneider. Thank you. Do you have the Do you have the proclamation? There was a proclamation yes. that was mentioned, but I don't have a copy of it. Um, thank you. Um, you got a copy? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to. There's a proclamation on the agenda. I had it in communication later, but I'll, I'll, I'll take administrative time to to do that. I do want to talk about a couple of quick points. First, is street import Im improvements are uh, out to bid, so that's that's a very good step in the right direction. Indian Mound, Wakefield, and Sheridan, we were nervous earlier in the year, and I think I mentioned multiple times with COVID that we, we felt potentially that project was going to be pushed back all the way, but it looks like we are going to be able to get the bids uh, and we'll be able to, to secure the contractor, and potentially we'll be able to start doing some concrete work, some sidewalks, some catch basins, some repair work, that will put us in really good position to get this project completed in the springtime. I don't know if they'll actually do be doing resurfacing the mill and grinding. Um, if they did, we would probably end up with them milling and grinding and, and then leaving it with the leveling surface and then the final surface would be done in the spring. But I really think this is gonna, it's gonna be a beautiful project in the spring. Um, so we are making progress there and I'm very, very pleased because I was nervous about that. Um, Montgomery Road improvements, I think the last council meeting or at some point I talked about we, we'd gotten a grant for some money for some Montgomery Road improvements and we think we'll be able to use, it's not a large amount of money, $100,000, but we should be able to make do some milling and do some repairs um, where we have damage from heavy equipment, heavy vehicular traffic 
and we should be able to make some changes there to improve upon Montgomery Road. It would be nice to get that done before winter sets in. Um, the police station has been painted, if you haven't noticed. Uh, I think it turned out really nice. We've gotten some a lot, a lot of really uh, good feedback on the police station. Um, seal coating of the municipal parking lots, the police police department parking lot, and the health department lot. It's strange because that the parking, the municipal parking lots are now full. It's almost like since we painted them, everybody wants to park in them, and during the day they're full. And I, I know a lot of that is going has to do with the uh, Ventura property and what's going on there, but. It's nice to see our parking lots full with people in the city working and doing, doing stuff. So Public Works continues to go above and beyond. Clint Zimmerman really does a great job. He's got a great team down there, and they are supporting each other and working hard every day. I can't tell you how proud I am of our Public Works Department because they have stepped up, and they're really working to make it better. And, and we just have some really great people working down there. They work a season ahead, so if you think about what they're doing right now, they're, they're starting to prepare for leaf season and all the fall stuff that goes on, so um, that's something that's, that's going on. EGov implementation, we talked a little bit about the budget, or, or the, the Finance Committee talked a little bit about the budget. EGov is a software system that we had hoped to have in place months ago, but when COVID struck, we haven't been able to do the training and get all that going. But EGov is a software system that will give all of the department heads much better accounting tools so they can look at their their actual every time they'll be able to look at it on their computer and understand better what's going on with their budget so we're, we're going to continue working on that implementation there's soft grade upgrades going on in the water department also so hopefully we'll get that taken care of so those are just sort of the brief ones the other thing is I had the proclamation and I'll do it now instead of later on in communications because I think it it's it's more timely. Um, so this September is Prostate Cancer Awareness um, and Education Month. So I'll read this proclamation off and then I'll be finished and I won't take any more of your time, but it's, it's important to understand that there are 191,930 men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in the United States alone and roughly 33,330 will die this year from prostate cancer. In Ohio, an estimated 7,030 7, new cases will be diagnosed and an estimated 1,200 deaths will occur, in, will occur in 2020. Men with relatives, father, fathers, brothers, sons with the history of prostate cancer are twice as likely to develop this disease. Prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death, the second leading cause of cancer death in American men behind only lung cancer. Men who served in the military who have been exposed to chemicals and herbicides are at a higher risk for developing prostate cancer. One in nine men are di diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. Education regarding prostate cancer and early detection strategies are critical to saving lives and preserving and protecting family. The economic and social hardship it has hit, that it has on families is huge. It, it, uh, prostate cancer costs over $8 billion in direct medical expenses. Um, all men are at risk for prostate cancer, and we encourage the citizens of Norwood to increase the importance of prostate, prostate screening. Um, we, are, we are lucky enough to have the urology group right here in, in the city of Norwood. So if you would, if you have friends and family, I know it's not, not a subject everybody wants to talk about, but um, this screening is, screening is where it's at. So it is September is Prostate Cancer Awareness and Education Month, and I'd appreciate it if you would talk to those that you love about taking care and, and treating themselves right. So that's really it for the administrative report. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Schneider. Mr. Bonsall. Yeah, I was just wondering if, if uh, the mayor wouldn't mind just finishing it, reading it, since he already read most of it, I think, and uh, that way we can just receive and file the proclamation later. Which part? Did you, did you read all of it all the way down? Well, I stopped I stopped right here at the end where it's all big, big and bold, but do you want me to read in witness there whereof? Well, I, mean, I, have, we were gonna, I think we were likely going to read it as a letter later, so it might as well finish it. And just. Well, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Now, therefore, I, Victor Schneider, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Norwood, state of Ohio, do hereby proclaim the month of September as Prostate Cancer Awareness and Education Month. <laughs> And then there's my city seal on here, and I've put my John Hancock or my Victor Schneider on there too. So is that good enough? That's great. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mayor Schneider. Uh, other 
staff. Yeah. Any other questions, comments for Mayor Schneider? Mr. Renardo? I think that we uh, motion to receive the administration report, administrator's report. The, the proclamation? Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Renardo. Yeah, I'll second that. Second by Mr. Braden. Any, any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsa? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present voting aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Mayor Schneider. Moving on to item N, unfinished business. Oh. Do we have any unfinished business this evening? No? One once. I know. Okay. <laughs> Move on to item O, new business. I should Can I check something? Uh, Mr. North. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> My bad. Uh, sorry, guys. Did we put into the economic development? Did we fit, do we have to like vote on Not that? yet. It's already in there? No. We didn't yeah. do that yet? No. It's on our new business. Give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Easy there, cowboy. <laughs> I didn't think it did. No, you're fine, man. I'm, I'm going to do it. Cool. Mr. Gabbard. Yes, before I do that, uh, tonight we have uh, Mr. <laughs> Ken Black. Um, he's a CFO for Adsposure. Uh, it was supposed to have been on the agenda. Uh, somehow it, he didn't get on. And I greatly apologize. And of all nights for you to come, a night that it, we just had a, a really a full agenda. But I'd like to ask him to come and give just a brief um, presentation on uh, the signs, digital signs that we have the opportunity to get and uh, gain some revenue from, and uh, it's really not going to cost us anything. So um, if that's okay. Mr. Black. Black. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so I wasn't, haven't been here before, so I wasn't sure that you guys had AV equipment or not. So. I get a look at my PowerPoint. You guys do not. I apologize. Um, my name's Ken Black. I own a company called uh, Advertising Vehicles and Adsposure. We do the bus advertising for Tank Cincinnati. Uh, we're the ones that put the name for the Cincinnati Bell connector on the streetcar. Uh, do this in Chicago, San Antonio, Fort Worth, Des Moines, Kansas City, Nashville, Lexington, as well as our hometown here. We're based in Blue Ash. Um, I got a phone call. Uh, as we're doing some work with the city of Cincinnati to put new benches and shelters in place, um, I got a phone call from Tom Perry and started that conversation about can we get some of these new benches and shelters in the city of Norwood at no expense to us as part of the contract I've got with SORTA. The answer is yes, and we're going to be working on putting some of those in place and uh, replacing some of the, the, the bad shelters there in, in your city. Um, that conversation led to the possibility of putting some additional signage in place in Norwood um, that would be a revenue split type of an opportunity for Norwood. So I've got nine signs um, that were originally part of a streetcar project. Um, there are nine digital signs. There's nine static signs um, that would be could be placed in some busy intersections up and down Montgomery Road, around uh, Rookwood Pavilion, for example anywhere where there's high density of traffic. Um, these signs then would be rotated with different advertisements. Um, once the signs are paid for, uh, we would then go into a 50-50 split of revenue with the city after expenses would be taken. Um, you guys would be able to use them as well for communication uh, to residents, to visitors into the community. Um, so we'd be able to utilize that, as, have a rotation of your own on these uh, signs. You can imagine uh, uh, the static signs I have, there's nine of them, they're double-sided, they're LED solar backlit. They're about the size of a, a bus shelter. Um, they're just standalone. Um, you could sit them you know, next to a bus shelter or anywhere else that you've got <coughs> traffic. Um, and those, they don't change. They're just a static sign that's backlit. Uh, the nine digital signs, uh, they loop different advertisements in. Um, they're basically like your TV screen at home, um, except they're meant for outside use uh, in a protective cabinet, etc. can be used uh, 12 months out of the year. So they're oriented, obviously not landscape, but portrait, so they're, they're more uh, oriented up and down. Um, just to go over uh, with you guys briefly, um, with the projections that we have, 
I've got about a million dollars into signs right now. Um, we would pay for all the signs, pay for all the installation of the signs. Um, that, that million dollars, by the way, is the installed cost of the signs, not just the hardware part. Uh, we would keep 100% of the revenue up until the point that we are made whole. Um, our money comes back out, and then at that point in time, we would go ahead and, and share revenue. Starting year three, we would guarantee a check to the city of Norwood for $42,500 a year. That's just a minimum guarantee. So even if we, we didn't make money, you guys would make $42,500. Um, and then we would go ahead and split any additional revenue um, up and above that 42.5 by 50%. The projections that I've got um, on our sales plan would be that we've got $552,000 of ad revenue that would be coming in a year. Um, your share of that obviously be $261,000 a year. So yeah, it's not a ton of money, but um, some pet projects that you guys might be able to get done as well as a way to communicate with the residents here. Um, so that's, that's the basic of it. I've got more details. I can answer questions if you have them. Um, we'd be selling eight advertisements on each one of the digital signs. Um, our assumptions, our projections are based on selling each one of those for about $600 to a local advertiser. The static signs, the non-digital ones, those would be sold about $300 per month to an advertiser. Obviously, they don't change, so there's just two opportunities there, whereas the digital signs have 16 advertisers that would, would rotate. Um, so that's basically it. I was asked to come in here by uh, Gabby and Tom just to kind of introduce this uh, into conversation for you guys to take it back and huddle later. And obviously, if there's more interest in, in getting this thing done, then we would have some more details that we'd work Mr. through. Mr. Renato had a question. Yeah, I just had a super cool question. Um, for the sales predictions, was there like a nearby city or uh, that you're using uh, that we could think to ourselves, okay, they're at 50% capacity or their utilization rather, 50% yeah. utilization, we might be able to expect the same in a COVID environment. Yeah. Like how are they doing right let's, now? Let's not expect anything in the COVID environment. The advertising business sucks right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, the answer to your question is we do a bus shelter advertising in places like Nashville, um, Kansas City, Des Moines, um, San Antonio, Fort Worth, uh, getting ready to start a new contract up in Chicago. These numbers all come from those experiences. We're looking at about a 65% sell-through rate. Um, we won't sell all the advertisements that are there. That's just impossible. Um, a campaign might start here, but a new campaign might uh, start two weeks later, so therefore there's a gap um, of inventory that you're not going to sell. Uh, there's seasonality in the advertising business that stops it from being sold 100%. So these projections have, take those rates that I just said sure. of $600 and $300, um, and then brings them down by 35% for unsold inventory. Thanks for that. Thompson. Hey, would you be able to send us your sales deck and and potentially some uh, uh, use case examples like like visual gallery kind of things uh, so we yeah, can tell I, what kind of unit yeah, you're I talking about? Tom does already have some stuff and I, um, this presentation I was going to present today I, I can send that to him. As cool, well. that's great. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Blair. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gabbard. Yes, I'd like to place um, ad exposure into economic development. Thank you, Mr. Gabbard. Mr. Gabbard. Um, I'd like to make sure that we've placed um, ordinances L three, four, and five back into economic development. And I'd like to call an economic development meeting for next Tuesday, the 15th, 7.30. Uh, where would you guys prefer, here or up there? The matter it seemed like there was a lot of people that showed up today just just in case we'll have it here that's tuesday the 15th yes that was tuesday not thursday my bad what are we talking here we said we did say the 15th right yeah the said, 15th is tuesday 17th is thursday but she said 17th i'm sorry tuesday the 15th <laughs> At 7.30? Yeah. 
at 7.30. Thanks, Gabby. Mr. Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So tomorrow we're supposed to have a, our standing Parks and Recreation Public Spaces Committee meeting. Um, I was hoping that we could move that since we had a game canceled for middle school football, and then we picked another one up at Ross, and I'm scared I won't be back in time. So I wanted to see if we could move that to next Wednesday, the 16th, at 7.30 in Council Chambers. I'm not available on Wednesday, but if you want to have it without me, that's, that's fine. Or, I mean, I, can I just suggest, uh, it does restrict us, but I think in, in a way it actually makes us a little bit smarter. I really loved when we doubled up the meetings like we did the other time and kind of restricted ourselves to that hour, hour and a half. Would you be cool? What that? Yeah, and just working with... Gabby and doubling up on the 15th we know a lot of us are it's a lot of the same people <laughs> yeah you know um, time did you guys do? I will be available on the 15th okay and doubling up meetings with me is going to be extremely hard especially come October what time did you guys do Mr. Gabber I'm sorry you guys did 7 30 7 30 I could do 6 30 that day and be great for me, but I can't make fifteenth. Yeah, go ahead. I'll I'll get there the fifteenth. That's fine. Thank you. Point of clarification. So then, will it be here at the community center? Then also. Yes, yeah, seven thirty. Okay. At five thirty. Six thirty. Sorry. Oh, six thirty. Okay. Thanks, guys. I actually think it worked pretty well. Um, it's efficient and it forces us to be a little bit smarter. So, yeah. Okay. You might be disappointed. I'll do what I can to try and move things around. Any other new business, Mr. Bright? Thank you, Mr. President. I um, I don't. I I, I just want to bring up something that um. We had a tragic, um, we had a couple of tragic deaths in Norwood, and I just wanted to extend, uh, maybe I wanted to, to give condolences and, and, and extend prayers to to the families that are involved. And I just would like to, um, you know, these are these are two. We have two deaths this week in, in Norwood, and it's it's a tragic, tragic episode. And there's a there's a child involved uh, that has to deal with this for the rest of his life. Uh, these are our local, these are our own, and these were people that were loved by many uh, local talent here in Norwood. And I would like to extend. I, I just I just I don't know how to. I want to say that if if you're out there and you feel like life is too hard. That, that you are in a situation where that you feel like this is, has to be something that you you are thinking or considering. I, I want to reach out to you and, and I want to I want to be that you know I, I'm sure everyone else feels the same way that if you are in a situation and 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 you need help, please reach out to somebody because we want to prevent stuff like this from happening again. Um, so I just I want to I want to extend prayers and I want to. Um, I want to be there for the people that loved these two individuals that are that are gone and I, I want to I know that there are community members that want to help this child that is left without parents so um, just 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 know that if you're out there and you're having a hard time that I personally want to help <coughs> and I know that everybody in this room also is wants to help also so just just I just I felt like something needed to be said so uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Braden. Any other new business? Mr. Dracy? Still deciding. Okay. Uh, I, I plan on having another committee the whole meeting the first uh, first week, probably in October. I don't have a firm date yet. Uh, like Mr. Leonardo said, that's nice to respect everyone's time and have back-to-back -back meetings. So I'll get back to you. But, but I would like to uh, let everyone know uh, I'm going to invite Pastor James to uh, to um, uh, explain his 13-point plan, 
and uh, see if we can have some uh, action items out of that uh, out of that meeting. We'll be doing that uh, probably the first week in October. Mr. Gavin. Uh, I'd like to encourage um, Mr. Braden to have a uh, streets infrastructure meeting, if we could, relatively soon, to continue our discussions and see if we can get some resolve on some street calming on some of these back um, back roads, back areas. Um, I know I've I've reached out to the safety service director and uh, the chief and ask if we could do you know some sort of maybe even a speeding blit that's you know to, to crack down on speeding um, I myself was doing 25 on Carthage the other day and, and, and was passed because I was going to speed limit I, I guess that was too slow getting passed on a on a street like Carthage is just not acceptable and uh, it, it's that that's that's not like it's a rare occasion either. It's happening a lot. Uh, they're flying down our streets, especially the thir the, the through uh, the through streets like Coatman, um, and there's we have them in each ward. So we need to really look at how we can do some some type of street calming and um, and start getting some resolve on this. So I would just encourage that, you know, you know, to, to reach out to the committee, look at that, um, and then. Um, be able to call a meeting whenever you're able to. Thank sure, you. Sure, I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Gabbard. <coughs> Mr. Tracy. Just to respond to Mr. Gabbard, um, maybe some street calming things is maybe dig some more potholes. <laughs> <Of course>. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. They don't care about the potholes. Go right there. <coughs> Any other new business? Thank you. We'll move on to um, communications. We have a letter from the mayor regarding mayor's court fines. Mrs. Williams. Letter dated September 3rd of 2020 to Mr. Ken Miracle, president, members of Norwood City Council, regarding mayor's court fines. Dear president and members of council, enclosed, please find the report for Norwood Mayor's Court for the month of 20, August 2020. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Sincerely, Victor Schneider, Mayor, City of Norwood. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Mr. Bonsall. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would move that we receive and file the letter. Thank you, Mr. Bonsall. Motion by Mr. Bonsall. May I have a second? Mr. Mm -hmm. Thompson? Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonsall? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present, voting aye. Motion passes. We have a letter from uh, the auditor's office regarding the August monthly financial report. Mrs. Williams. Letter dated September 2nd, 2020 to the Norwood City Council. Dear council members, this letter is to let you know that the August monthly financial reports were emailed to each council member on September 2nd. If you have not received said email, please let me know so that I can verify your email address and also get you a copy of the reports. Sincerely, Kelly Brown, Account Clerk, Auditor's Office. Mr. Thomas, Mr. Bonds, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's a compliment. It's good. Hey, uh, I would move that we uh, receive and file the letter. Mr. Oh, Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> second by Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bonzel? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Geraci? Yes. Mr. Kelsch? Yes. Mr. DiNardo? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Braden? Yes, ma'am. All members present voting aye. The motion passes. All members are present. No need to excuse. Item R, adjournment. May I have a motion? Mr. Bonzel. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we adjourn. Motion by Mr. Bonzel. Do I have a second? Mr. Braden? I'll second that. Please call the roll. I'm sorry, who seconded? John. John. Okay. Mr. Bonzel. Yes. Mr. Gabbard. Yes. Mr. Geraci. No. Mr. Kelsch. Yes. Mr. DiNardo. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Braden. Yes, ma'am. All members present voting. We have six yeses, one no. This meeting is hereby adjourned.